With the first lights of the new year, the activity on the front lines of the Ukraine-Russia war flared up again. Especially in the last week of December 2022, the solid defensive blockade of the Ukrainian Defense Forces on the eastern fronts of the war created the opportunity for the soldiers of the Kiev army for new offensive operations. Let's dive into the areas where hot breaking points are currently occurring on the front lines on the battlefield. The eastern regions of Ukraine, where the tension has not decreased for even a second, are among the key places of the war at the moment. Last night, the units of the Ukrainian armed forces, together with an elite artillery brigade, moved towards the military operational areas of the Kiev army on the Donetsk front. The artillery brigade of the Kiev army, which came to support the Ukrainian forces on this front line, will act as a game changer to completely break through the defensive lines formed by the Russian troops in Donetsk. Also since last week, Ukrainian partisan groups in Donetsk and Azov special forces, which have pushed the Russian troops hardest on this front line, have begun to advance south of the Bakhmut front line. Horlivka is the breathing point on the route of the Ukrainian soldiers who are currently displaced from the battles of Bakhmut to support the Donetsk line. The intelligence that emerged that these Ukrainian troops were conducting an offensive operation in the coming days to establish dominance on the connecting bridge extending from Donetsk in the direction of Makivka and to push the Russian defense lines further towards the Kartysk region increased the heat on the battlefield considerably. In the areas along the Bakhmut front line, rear guard attacks by Ukrainian forces are still continuing at this time. In the south of the Bakhmut front, as we mentioned, the defensive shields created by the Russians in the firing line between Donetsk and Makivka continue to be damaged by the heavy shots of the Ukrainian artillery. While Russia's chances of holding this region are decreasing day by day, it would not be a surprise if the troops of the Moscow army left this front line in a few days especially before the connecting bridge in the direction of Makivka is completely under the control of the Ukrainian forces. Now let's head north of Bakhmut. In Zelenopilia, Bakhmutska and Solodar, a little further to the north, artillery attacks of the Ukrainian armed forces are putting the invading Russian soldiers under a great strain. Last night, the front line was also very active. Entering the new year with clashes, the forces of the Ukrainian army launched crossfire against the Russian trenches and military defense areas in and around Bakhmutska. The heavy attack of the Ukrainian troops later in the night rendered the front lines of the Russian fortifications unusable. The invading Russian soldiers who were sleeping at night learned in the first days of the new year that Bakhmutska was not safe for them either. Let's head a little further north east of Solodar. After the simultaneous striking attacks of the Ukrainian troops in Syavyerodonetsk and its environs, Already in the last weeks of December, the invading Russian soldiers could not make a new counter-response in this area. In recent days, the ongoing Ukrainian fire in the Sievierodonetsk region has destroyed most of the Russian fortifications. The Kiev army welcomed the first moments of the new year with heavy artillery attacks on the front line. Now speaking of incidents regarding the latest situation in Sievierodonetsk and the Luhansk region, we are heading towards the front line where the most critical and violent clashes are taking place at the moment. Yes, the place we're talking about is the Kremina battle line northwest of Sievierodonetsk. Perhaps even now between Kremina and Luhansk, where the sounds of artillery and missiles continue. The Ukrainian forces advanced 4 kilometers for only one week with a very critical gain. In addition to the Ukrainian artillery brigade sent to Donetsk, a Ukrainian artillery brigade sent to Luhansk was diverted directly to the Kremina line. This tank brigade of the Ukrainian armed forces, which plays a strategic role in the course of the conflicts here, has bombarded the Russian Kremina defense lines since the last few days. While the soldiers of the Moscow army gave six months to advance only 200 meters on Ukraine's eastern fronts, especially in Bakhmut, Kiev's artillery brigade penetrated four kilometers into the defense line of the Russian soldiers in Kremina, thanks to the successful shootings it has carried out since the last week of December. The Moscow army, which had a difficult time logistically in Donetsk and Luhansk, started to flee from Kremina while continuing to move away from the dream of Donbass because the Russians have only two options on this line. The first option is to drop your weapons and run away, as we told you. The second option involves the withdrawal of the invading troops from Kremina towards Rubizhna to Luhansk. But this option is quite risky for the Moscow army, 
On the front lines around Crimea and Luhansk, the number of Russian soldiers lost in the last five days alone has increased to 760. Almost three times this number of wounded Moscow army soldiers lie in hospitals in Luhansk. If leader Vladimir Putin wants to put his personal views aside and put the lives of his soldiers first, Crimea has to withdraw its troops from the front line. For Alexei Hromov, deputy head of the main operations department of the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces, stated that the advance in Crimea will not be limited to four kilometers. Critical and violent clashes continue in the areas between Bakhmut and Crimea front line. In Bilohorivka, artillery shelling against the domination area formed by the Russian army until a few days ago broke the silence. Bilohorivka is located south of the Crimea front line and covers a highly risky barrier zone. Russia wants to keep this front under control, but the plans of the Ukrainian armed forces are causing the invading Moscow army to withdraw their defense lines and even in some settlements to leave and flee. After Bilohorivka, we go to the southwest of Kremina and another hot fighting center located to the northwest of Bilohorivka. The name of this place is Dibrova. Dibrova, where the Ukrainian forces have persistently intensified their offensive operations since December 30th, became the focus of gunfire and artillery fire in the first days of the new year. The simultaneous attacks of the Ukrainian armed forces on the fortification points in the regions occupied by Russia after the new year and the important events on the other fronts presents us with very important scenarios regarding the course of the war. In this scenario, the number of Russian troops available in Ukraine is by no means holding the battle lines. In late January or early February, a flash flood of newly formed Russian troops could attack weak points in the Ukrainian lines and push large numbers of Ukrainian troops back, forcing them to either retreat westward or risk encirclement and destruction. It is said that the Moscow administration will continue its attacks against civilian targets in Ukraine in order to realize this scenario. In addition, Russian troops will try to achieve this goal in winter offensives by driving Ukraine across the Dnipro River in the south, to Kharkiv in the north and out of the Donbass in the center. The front lines of the Ukraine-Russia war, where missiles and long-range weapons still speak again, will be focused because of this plan of the Russians. But the biggest advantage of Ukraine about this danger is that it has come a long way in air defense. Russia has recently failed in almost 90% of its missile strikes on Ukrainian territory. This failure was mainly due to the incredible struggle of the Ukrainian air defense forces and the air defense systems in the inventory of the Kiev army. Despite all this, Russia's desire to occupy Ukrainian lands is not welcomed in Russia at all. According to Vladimir Putin, there is still much to be done in Ukraine. It is not a coincidence that even if Putin achieves a victory once, in the center and outside of Kharkiv and Donbass, in short, in all places that include this region, then he will declare victory and weave an iron curtain in this region along the new border and embark on a negotiated solution with Kiev. But what will be the reaction of Ukraine in this process? We will see the answers to all these questions together. Thank you for watching us.